As always, if you haven't done so yet, make sure that you attempt to answer this question first on your own before listening on. Our first step will be to draw a picture of the scenario that is described. So here is a picture of the rectangular field that's described in the question. Notice that we have drawn a fence that's parallel to one of the sides of the rectangle as indicated in the question. We've labeled the length of this rectangular field x and then the width of the rectangular field y. We also want to notice that this length right here would also be y since it runs parallel to the other side that we already labeled y. And the same thing would be true of this side over here that's also y. And this length up here, of course, will also be labeled x. Now, with any optimization problem, after you draw a labeled diagram, what you want to do next is come up with what I like to call a constraint equation. And the constraint equation is going to always be based on the number that is actually given in the question. Now, in this case, the number that's given in the question is 1.5 million square feet. So we're going to base our constraint equation on that number. We want to notice that square feet is a unit of area. So our constraint equation must involve the area of our rectangular field. Now, of course, the area of a rectangle is given by the equation length times width. And as indicated in our drawing, the length of our rectangle is x and the width of our rectangle is y. Now we recall that the question actually constrains the problem to have an area of 1.5 million square feet. So that means that for the area right here we can plug in 1.5 million. It might be more convenient to write out 1.5 million in scientific notation, so we can write that as 1.5 times 10 to the power of 6. And that's again going to equal x times y. Now typically what you want to do with your constraint equation is solve it for y. And so in order to solve this constraint equation for y, we can divide both sides by x. And of course on the right hand side the x's are going to cancel out. So we'll take this result and we're going to basically put it on hold. We'll set it off to the side and refer back to it shortly. Next, we need to come up with what I like to call the objective equation. Now the objective equation is based on the quantity that you are actually trying to minimize or maximize in some other problems. In this case, we're trying to minimize the cost of the fence. So we need to come up with some kind of equation to represent cost. Now we'll notice the question doesn't actually tell us anything about the real cost of the fence. And so what we're going to do in this case is actually look at this in terms of perimeter. The perimeter would be the sum of the lengths of all sides of this figure. And if we look carefully, we can see that the perimeter is going to equal x plus x, which of course would be 2x, plus the three sides that have been labeled y. So that would be 3y. The idea here is that if we can minimize the perimeter, then we're going to minimize the actual cost of the fence because having the least amount of fencing would produce the least amount of cost. So really our objective becomes to minimize the perimeter. And here is where our previous result will come in handy. We're going to take this expression for y and we're going to substitute it into our objective equation. We would then like to simplify our objective equation and to do that we can put this 3 over a 1 and then when we multiply, we would multiply the numerators, so the 3 multiplied by 1.5 times 10 to the 6, and then multiply the denominators. So that's going to give us a perimeter equation of 2x plus 4.5 times 10 to the power of 6, all divided by x. Now, in order to find the minimum value of the perimeter, and hence the minimum cost, we need to compute the derivative of this equation. But before we do that, it's going to be useful to take this x in the denominator and move it to the numerator. Now, of course, when we do that, the exponent will change its sign. So right now, this is x to the positive 1. When we move it up to the numerator, it will become x to the negative 1. We are now set to compute the derivative. We can call the derivative of the perimeter p prime. Now the derivative of 2x, of course, would just be 2. We're going to take this exponent and we're going to pull it down in front. So we're going to end up with a minus 1, which we can just write as a minus sign. We then have the 4.5 times 10 to the 6th. We have x 
And of course, the rules of taking derivatives require us to subtract 1 from this exponent, so that becomes x to the negative 2. Now, after computing the derivative, what we need to do is set this derivative equal to 0. So we're basically going to make this derivative p prime 0. Next, our goal will be to solve for x, and there's a couple of ways we could do this. My preferred method is to multiply each of these terms, and there are three of them, by x to the positive 2, and we'll see why that works nicely. If we multiply this by x to the positive 2, what ends up happening is we add the exponents. That will create x to the 0, and of course x to the 0 is just a 1, so it essentially disappears, if you will. We also have to multiply this term by x to the power of 2, and this term by x to the power of 2. The left-hand side will remain 0, since 0 multiplied by any quantity is 0. We have here 2x squared. And then over here, we'll just have the 4.5 times 10 to the power of 6. Again, the x to the negative 2 and x to the positive 2 will effectively cancel. We can now add the 4.5 times 10 to the 6 to the other side. We could then divide both sides of this equation by 2. And then finally, we will take the square root of both sides of the equation. The right-hand side, of course, will just become x. When we square root scientific notation, we have to be a little bit careful. We're going to square root this number right here, and when we do that, we get 1.5. And then when you square root 10 to the power of 6, you actually get 10 to the power of 3. Briefly, the way that works, when you have 10 to the power of 6 and you're square rooting it, that's the same thing as taking 10 to the power of 6 and raising it to the power of 1 half. And when you have a power to a power, you multiply those two powers. And 6 times 1 half, of course, is 3. So that's why we get 10 to the power of 3 right there. Now, to confirm that this value of x actually does indeed minimize the value of the perimeter, and hence the value of the cost of the fence, we could apply the second derivative test. So we've recopied the first derivative here. What we'll do is take the second derivative, p double prime. Now, the derivative of 2, of course, would just be 0. And we're going to apply the power rule again, so we'll pull down this negative 2. This will become a plus 2 times the 4.5 times 10 to the 6th. And then the x will have to have its exponent subtracted by 1. This gives us x to the negative 3. We can simplify this a little bit by writing 9 times 10 to the 6th x to the negative 3. And then we could take this x to the negative 3 and move it to the denominator. When we do that, remember that it changes its sign. So we now have 9 times 10 to the 6th over x cubed. What we do then is we plug this value of x into our second derivative, and we basically want to see whether it comes out positive or negative. Now if you look at the numerator, the numerator is positive, and the value of x that we're plugging in is also positive. And if we take a positive number and cube it, we're going to get a positive number. And of course, a positive divided by a positive is overall positive. The second derivative test tells us that if we get a positive result, then indeed we have what is known as a local minimum at x equals 1.5 times 10 to the third. So the second derivative test confirms for us that this value of x does indeed minimize the cost of the fence. Finally, we recall that we still have to find the value of y, and that'll be relatively straightforward because we remember that y was equal to 1.5 times 10 to the 6 divided by x. So we'll take this value of x and we'll substitute it in to that equation. And when we do that, we get 1 times 10 to the third for the value of y. So the final answers are as follows. The x, or length of the fence, will have to be 1.5 times 10 to the third feet. And the y, or the width of the fence, will be 1 times 10 to the power of 3 feet. And these two values will indeed minimize the cost of the fence. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe so you can stay tuned for similar videos. And remember, you can send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen, and I'll do my best to post the answer to it on YouTube.